Good morning, happy Thanksgiving. Obviously had a lot of snow overnight, which was forecasted, which is great, we, we need a lot of snow. Uh, but it was a good morning, got up around five and started getting things ready. Pulled the turkey out of the brine and got it dried down. If you're curious which recipe I'm using for the brine, I'll, I'll post it up on the video uh, in the description. It's just a Traeger recipe for smoked turkey. We used it last year and it turned out really good. So we thought, why, you know, why try to ruin a, a good thing? Um, last year was the first year we smoked turkey. And this year, my wife said, you're, you're signed up. So, <laughs> um, I think I'll be a repeating occurrence. But, you know, to tell you the truth, you know, it's a, it's a bit of prep uh, with the turkey, of course. But... Um, Last year was the first time I really, really enjoyed the white meat of the turkey. I usually go for the darker meat because it's not overcooked, um, because it takes a higher temperature to cook it. But, uh, but last year the the white and the dark meat were were cooked well. So, and I think it has a lot to do with the smoker, nothing to do with me. <laughs> I didn't do anything special besides follow the recipe. Uh, so we'll see. Yeah, I got the I got the bird put on. Um, getting all the ingredients in the cavity was was a trick. Um, last year I used, I think, quarter onions instead of chopped, and so that made it a lot simpler. Maybe I should have done the same thing, but um, I didn't realize it till I was actually putting it in the cavity that I'd done it differently. It also calls for rosemary, thyme, sage, parsley. <laughs> if you don't know that, that song by Simon and Garfunkel, then uh, don't worry about it. So I started the smoker at 225, and um, it'll basically smoke at that temperature for two to three hours, maybe a little bit longer because this is a big bird. Bird we did last year, I think was a 15 pound, 14 for 15 pound bird. This year we did a 20 pound bird again because we, we liked it so much we want the leftovers. So, so it'll smoke for two or three hours and then uh, we'll turn up the temperature to 350 and finish it off for the last three or four hours. You know, we'll eat when the bird's done basically, which is the, which is a nice thing about, you know, having it just uh, being intimate this year. I don't have to stress so much about timing. Last year we had a great group of people over, our, my, my mom and uh, sister, her, her husband and, and kids, and it was a great time. Uh, but you got to think about the timing a lot more. Where my wife says we want to eat about three, so for me, about could be two or it could be three or four. <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, but as far as setting up that signals uh, thermometer, uh, I really, so far I really like it, you know. Um, I like the idea that it has the colors on both ends. Um, the Weber didn't, I'm trying to remember. Oh, it just had, the rubber. The Weber had the, the silicon colored ends on the corner of the probe and nothing on the, the end where you plug it in. When I saw that, I was like, oh, this is a genius because on the signals, I, I, you always, you know, you push the, the temperature probes through the, the side of the smoker and you, and you close it as fast as possible and, and to keep the heat in there and, and you start plugging them in and without the colors at the, at the plugs, you, you don't know, you know what you're plugging in unless you trace it back. And you know, that, might seem, that might seem silly to even think that that's an issue, but when you're, when you're trying to keep track of certain parts of the meat, especially with the turkey, um, that's really nice. So I did yellow and green for the breast meat, uh, red for the for the thigh meat, dark meat, and I did the blue a blue blue color for the smoker temperature. Um, and so I'll put a recording up of it uh, of the setup I did. Um, <laughs> like I said, I, I'm super impressed. Now it's definitely it's it's three times the price, of course, of the of the Weber. So that's some that's that says something too. I mean, if you're going for for um, the economic side of it, the Weber worked great for me for a year and a half. I, I can't I can't fault it that way. Um, I just got more picky, <laughs> and it's not really picky, I should say. There's things that happened where I was smoking a brisket for you know 14, 15 hours, and you know you're going you're leaving the house, you're coming back, you don't know when the stall is going to happen, um, you don't know when the stall is going to be done and all of a sudden it'll start climbing and be, get close to your temperature and, and just to, just to be able to just check it and also have it alarm you when you're not when you're not home is nice you know right now it's connected obviously on Wi-Fi even to be able to go our house is a you know the the style with the garage in the back and the alleyway and it's it's kind of long it's probably 90 feet long 
um, 90, 100 feet, maybe with a garage probably over 100 feet long. When you think about it's a th it's a basement with a, a two story. When you think about that, just just being in the house alone, I'll I'll lose Bluetooth uh, range really quickly, right? As soon as I leave this room, pretty much I'll lose the Bluetooth. And you know, Bluetooth nowadays is getting really good. You can go pretty far with it, especially with line of sight. But once you start getting the heating ducts and sheer walls and um, appliances and and uh, all that in the way, it it interferes with the signal quite a bit. So. Uh, my wireless environment here is phenomenal. I, I upgraded uh, a few months ago, uh, which I'll probably do a video on that too. Um, I recorded, I just never did anything with it. But I upgraded to two access points, um, and I used the Ubiquiti access points, and I, I really love that. So I've got a, a AP right here, which is, again, really close to the patio, and then I've got one downstairs towards the garage so that it can hit the... Uh, my wife's craft room as well as the uh, ring floodlight that's on the back of the garage. So we get a good coverage in, in our house and those, those APs are, are very nice. So the wireless, I don't expect the wireless to have any problems um, with this. I know I, I saw some reviews and very few. Uh, the number of few poor reviews on this thing were, were slight which is always important to me as well. But the ones I saw it seemed like they didn't know what their wireless protocols were, what they were capable of, what their range was. And I knew that before I ever bought the thing. I walked out there, I walked out the front yard, I can get 50 feet in front of my house um, and still get uh, a, a decent signal. And this is much closer, the patio is much closer to the access point. So, so I had no problem with that. So, you know, the testing I did in the previous video was all to just validate that I can drop Bluetooth and it'll still connect. I can put Bluetooth back on, it'll reconnect. I can drop Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, be basically away in, on cellular only, and I can see the temperatures and then I'll, I'll get the alarms. That was that was a, a really important piece to me of, of buying the signals. The Weber worked in every other way just fine. Um, uh, like I said, the, the previous problem I had seemed to dissipate with, I, and it might have been an iPhone update, it might have been a big problem, uh, a problem with the iPhone's Bluetooth um, radio or, or firmware. Um, but over the last few months, it definitely got better where it would reconnect most of the time. Um, but before that, I would say before July or um, June of this year, if I, if I got out of range, meaning I walked 30 feet in the house one direction or the other, I'd have to go out to the smoker, hard power, you know, power down the Weber um, uh, I grill, and power back up for it to connect back to Bluetooth, and that was really aggravating. So. Uh, but again, since it's since I didn't change the Weber, but I did, you know, I've upgraded the firmware on my phone, different versions, and all that. Uh, maybe, maybe it was just my phone that was causing that issue. So, I, like I said, I don't want this to be a bad review of the Weber because I used it for a year and a half without a problem. Um, but this, this, the signals, if it works the way it's supposed to, which I think it will, it'll it'll fill in a couple of the gaps that I that I required. So, but anyway, happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for watching, and I'll uh, I'll finish up this video. Uh, as we monitor the bird and use the signals to watch it. I'll try to do as much screen recording of the app as things change so you can see that progress. But uh, yeah, it's, it'll, it'll be a fun uh, fun experience to see how well this, this performs. Um, maybe it's a little bit risky to <laughs> use a brand new tool like this on a, on a, on a Thanksgiving Day turkey, but um, like I said, the reviews are good and uh, I'm anxious to see how well it does. So. <laughs> so that's a funny thing. Um, hope I didn't wake up my neighbor. I heard an <laughs> I heard an alarm going on. I'm going to turn on the screen recording so you can see what, what I, what's happened here. Um, the smoker got too hot. Well, kind of too hot. Um, so I've got to change this alarm. Interesting thing is... It is a little warm though. But you know, the thing is too, is about where I, I put that probe possibly in a poor location. I put it further away from the firebox on the right side hand side where 
most of the heat, it seems to, that smoker has a lot more heat on the left side where the, the firebox comes and the, um, the drip tray kind of leans up at an angle. So the, the, the hotter side is that left side. So I put it on the other side. I probably should have put it further in as well so it's not over one of the cavities on the side of the smoker. So it's not getting uh, heat right off the flame of the firebox coming up the side. But uh, yeah, it's going back down now, so we'll see. Hopefully I didn't wake up my neighbor with that alarm, but at, le at least we know it works, right? Um, so looking at that graph, let me pick, pick this here, the graph. Looks good. So, well, first test accomplished <laughs> unintentionally, but I accomplished it. Do you like helping? Do you like helping? Yeah, you're a pretty dog. Well, that was a, a good experience. So, which is it going to be? Am I going to keep the signals send it, or send it back or stick with the Weber iGrill? This is iGrill 2. So this is the one I've had, like I said, for over a year and a half now. Or about a year and a half now. Um, I, I've been really pleased with just the short time I've had with this. Like I said, I just got it yesterday. Time will, will definitely tell, but I never lost connection to it. I was able to, you know, pretty much get onto it whenever I wanted to. Something that I didn't realize too is where I have my smoker located, I can actually see the numbers on, on the screen uh, from the patio, so I don't have to go outside. I can. My, my, my wife actually has better eyes than I do. She can really see it, but but even I can see it. My my eyes are worse than hers, but even I can see it. That's nice. Like the, 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 something about the Weber, it's a it's a it's a, it's a decent device for the price. But if uh, the problem with the Weber is these these red LEDs, they just don't show up well in the sun. At night they're fine, but. In the day, in in the daytime, you can barely see this thing. Now, of course, I wouldn't be able to see this at night. <laughs> so it's, it's, I guess, it's a trade-off, right? Which, which, which do you care about? The thing is, though, the fact that this never gets gets disconnected, I can always pull it up in the app. The alarms work perfectly. I don't really need to see it from the patio. That was something I used as a backup, basically, because I the app disconnected. So ideally, you wouldn't have to see it, right? In fact, I believe. This doesn't even show the, num the temperature on the display when it's connected to Bluetooth. I think it's only when it's hit. So that, that tells you, you know, I, I always had my phone open and, and uh, if it wasn't connecting, I'd, I'd look at the display as it was sitting on the, on the smoker. But this, you know, this thing, it, it just worked good. Uh, the only thing I, <laughs> I, I like I said, every, any criticisms I have is not really of the device. I, I need to learn how to use it um, appropriately. I initially set I, I set the temperature alarms for even the smoker, which I've never had before, so uh, I didn't really need to. But um, I set the temperature for that. Didn't realize that I put the the sensor for the smoker over one of the sides that vents up. Um, maybe I said this earlier. I can't remember. And so the temperatures went quite high. I think I had it set to 225, but the sensor was reading 260, 280, 290. But the smoker said it was like 30, 40 degrees cooler because it's got a, a temperature probe for the smoker as well on its on board. When I opened the thing, I realized that I'd inadvertently, in my focus on getting the turkey in the, in the smoker, I inadvertently put the ambient sensor really close to where this, those flames, the heat from the flames of the firebox come around the drip pan. So I just moved it in like two inches and then it was fine, it was perfect. Um, it was within a few degrees of, of where the smoker said it was. The smoker's probe for temperature is on the opposite side near the where the pellet 
uh, boxes and it stands vertical inside that Traeger. And so it, um, it's going to be a different, a little bit different numbers. It should be a little bit different, but uh, it was, it was tracking really well. Um, and I have some video of, of looking at the app throughout the process. It went really well. I was actually surprised how small this was. Um, I had no point of reference online really, just the, pic the pictures of it never really depicted. For some reason I thought it was going to be bigger and I'm really happy with the size. I feel like the screen is plenty big, but it's durable. You know, it says it's a water splash proof, whatever that IP66 I think it was. Um, I definitely tested it today inadvertently. In fact, it got to the point where I was worried. <laughs> <laughs> about getting it too wet because I had it just stuck on the front of the smoker as you probably saw. Uh, I wiped the snow off it a few times because it was snowing a wet, wet snow here in Utah. Pretty heavy. And so finally, I, <laughs> since it was wirelessly connected, I actually stuck it like this underneath the uh, the tray for the Traeger so it was completely sheltered from, from all the snow, uh, which is great. And it just stayed there and I was able to still get it see it on my see it on my phone. Like I said, there was no reason for me to have to do that. It it didn't have any errors. It seemed like it was resisting the water just fine. Um, I just didn't want to ruin my brand new my brand new uh, uh, toy here. So so anyway, the, the magnets stuck really well even with the four probes plugged into it and never it, it didn't seem like it was even close to coming off or anything. So that was a good a good uh, uh, process I like green, so I, I chose green. There's like seven or eight colors you can choose. Um, so yeah, I, I I give this based off of this one experience a really high a really high rating. Uh, it, it worked exactly as advertised. I really like the app. It's the app works uh, is quick. And it's, it's you can tell it's been updated recently and stuff. The, 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 Weber app, the Weber app has a few more things on it, like it has a preset function and you can, you can, you can search by type of meat and uh, it'll give you the safe range for that meat, which is nice. The, the, the Signals app, the, the Thermoworks barbecue app doesn't have that. That being said, I don't usually, I never usually rely on the Weber app to tell me that. I'd, re I'd rely on the recipe pretty much. I have to tell me where I want it to be because a lot of times it's different than what um, versus safe versus good are two different things sometimes. Um, uh, you know, for instance, you know, beef it can be over 160, 165. Uh, if it's ground beef, one you know, if it's steak or whatever, 120, 130. But if I do a brisket, it's 204, 205. <laughs> now again, I, I actually think this actually gave me a 204, 205 reading on the recommendation. So. So the Signals app doesn't have that. That's definitely a, a difference. And the only reason I'm comparing these two is because this is what I've had and this is what I bought. So, uh, you know, there was a reason I bought this that, that where this I felt like this was falling short. And, and really it's just on the technology side of it. The, the function of this is, work, is working really well. Like, you know, as far as something you stab in the meat and you have this on the side it's got magnets of course on the back as well and this, this thing you can you can tilt upwards or downwards i usually have it tilt the upwards because i have it on the smoker like that and so you know this 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 little thing worked well it, it did I, I i i don't want to bash on it but it left me wanting on, on just the the ability to leave the house and the uh the ability to reconnect when I was within Bluetooth range, um, or just connect when I'm in the house. Period. Sometimes in some places of the house, the Bluetooth range wasn't so great, where this was solid the entire time. The, I think the one thing I learned from just today's experience with the turkey is I'm not going to set as many alarms um, <laughs> because it honestly it was it was telling me the truth. The alarms were going off when it needed to be, but. Um, but I just didn't need them. Like I, I needed the one temperature alarm for the probe that was, you know, the center of, of the, the white meat on that turkey, and that was it. So turkey turned out beautifully, by the way. Uh, family loved it. So yeah, I think uh, I'll probably be giving this to my sister. <laughs> they they they, sh they showed interest in it, so that goes to her, and I got the new one. Love it. So oh, another thing. 
Uh, this, and this, I, I bought this, by the way. This is not a sponsored video or anything. Um, I bought this with my own money. The thing about it is, <laughs> I bought this, what, Monday? Tuesday. I bought it Tuesday. Yeah, I bought it on Tuesday and had it overnighted, so I paid like 20 bucks to have paid for the overnight shipping. It's a lot, but I wanted it for Thanksgiving. When, once my wife said, yeah, let's get it. I wanted to get it. So, funnily enough, the next day, when uh, like an hour or two after I unboxed it, I happened to be on the website looking at my account. I happened to notice they had some Black Friday deals, and I looked at there, and this was, was it 20% off? It ended up basically being 40 bucks off um, from what I paid. And, and I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> so, so I actually called their customer service. I talked to uh, Adrienne, I think it was. Uh, she was very kind. And I just, I just said, hey, um, this might be a long shot, but I just bought this thing yesterday. I've uh, been wanting it for a long time. I just noticed you dropped the price probably for the Black Friday sale week, you know. Is there any chance, you know, I could get, I could get that price, I could get the discount, you know, credited back to my card for the amount that I, from the amount I paid. And she's like, she looked at my account, she's like, what's your cell, your order number, everything? And sure enough, she's like, yeah. She's like, we'll, we'll go ahead and do that for you. I'll, we'll have that, put that amount, that, that amount uh, back on your card. So, so that was great. You know, that was uh, unexpected thing. I didn't expect to need to call them the next day. I didn't, didn't really need to call them. And the customer service was phenomenal. So I guess that's just a, another another reason that uh, I'd recommend them. The, the customer service was, was great. And I imagine their tech support would be along the same lines. Well, I hope this helps. Um, for me, it's a yes and an easy win. Uh, I really, really like it. I, I At this point, it's just a question of whether it'll keep uh, keep behaving and, and keep up and, and remain durable and whether the app will be updated uh, with you know the different operating systems that change and everything if as long as all those things stay up to date then <laughs> I'll be pretty happy with it so Thermalworks you nailed it signals barbecue yeah and I'll put the link to the one I specifically got on in the description uh, for this video so Anyway, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.